The Volkswagen Golf and Seat Leon are very close friends, family even. Over the years, they've shared engines, transmissions, underpinnings, switch gear, but despite this familiarity, one has always massively outsold the other. You know which one, it's not a trick question. Even though the Leon has traditionally undercut the Golf in terms of price, Golf sales are on another planet compared to the Leon. But just because something is popular doesn't mean it's good. And in fact, this new Leon isn't just better than the Golf, it's one of the best new family cars on sale. We're going to explain why, but if you've already made up your mind, save £2,500 off the new Leon or £1,500 off the new Golf right now by clicking on that link at the top of the screen or searching for What Car Deals. Let's cover what's new with the car first. So this is the fourth generation Seat Leon and compared to the previous car, it's wider, it's lower, but more significantly, it's longer. And most of that extra length has gone into the back so that we'll hopefully have some more rear seat passenger space. On the outside of the car, you can see it has got a different look from before. At the front, it's got this kind of Ford Focus-y Seat Turaco look to the bonnet. Do you like it? Let me know in the comments below. But more similarly to the previous car, you've got the same three styling lines down the back and also this window kink, and they've just been slightly altered from before. But the rear, this is different. So you've got this full width light bar, and interestingly, the central brake light is integrated into the middle of it here, rather than being mounted separately higher up. Also on higher spec models like FR, which is the model we've got here, you get scrolling indicators and also when you unlock the car, a kind of animated light display. Inside, the Leon is very different from before and it's had a similar kind of makeover to the new Golf. And by the way, if you want to see exactly what's changed on that new Golf, then you can watch our separate review by clicking on the link at the top of the screen there, but we will still look at it in a minute. But in the Leon, it's resulted in this kind of contemporary look and a decent feel of quality throughout with these squishy materials on the dash, although this is a bit more suspect feeling. And the weakest point of this interior is actually this door pull down here, which just feels really cheap, plasticky, quite hollow. But otherwise, it's a pretty nice interior. The software behind these infotainment systems is very similar, but the looks and the layouts are different. Both are frustratingly entirely touchscreen, but the Leon's interface is simple to get your head around and the screen responds to inputs quickly. It's certainly better than the Golf system, which might look a bit sharper, but the interface seems to have been designed purely to look good with things like these fancy images of the car that rotate as you swipe. Which is nice, as long as the system itself is great, but it isn't. So when you're swiping between these fancy graphics or even just the menus, it's actually quite laggy. And on a few different Golf test cars that we've had, the system has crashed or had to reboot. So it's really not that impressive at all. So the one in the Seat is better. You used to be able to say that a VW Golf would absolutely knock a Ford Focus or a Seat Leon out the park for interior build quality. But that isn't the case anymore. And it's as much to do with those rivals upping their game as it is with the Golf dropping the ball because in here, it's just not as plush nor as well built as the old Golf. Although having said that, we can't really be too negative because in the context of new cars and new family cars and compared to the Leon, it is a little bit better than that car. Not by much at all though. Because they're so similar, it's only really a slightly plusher armrest that separates them. So just like the Leon, the fit and finish is still decent, with squishy materials on top of the dash, but a slightly flimsy feel further down. A BMW 1 Series by comparison is in a different league entirely. Although the Golf does win the cup holder game because this is quite snazzy down here. Press this button and it rotates around, you pop your drink in there, and that's just quite cool. The Leon is slightly more spacious up front, but you still won't struggle to get comfortable in the Golf. There's plenty of room there. But in the back, the differences are bigger. And you can probably see that in the Leon, there's absolutely loads of leg room. Really, really is very impressive for that. And it's more than you get in the Golf. It's even similar to what you get in the very spacious Ford Focus. And it generally feels quite airy in the back here. Another interesting feature to point out are these seatbelt holders on the side, which you don't see very often. And it means that you can hold the seatbelt in place, stop it rattling around, and if you want to flatten the seats, then it means you can just helpfully put them out of the way. The Golf is really good for headroom in the back, and overall it's decent, but it's not quite as spacious as the Leon. The Leon has an above average boot for the class, taking six carry-on size suitcases below the parcel shelf with room left over. 
The Golf will fit just five cases, but it gets a height adjustable boot floor as standard, which creates a separate compartment below when it's raised to its highest position. You don't get that in the Leon. Still, the Leon just about wins the battle for interiors, but which is best on price? Well, the new Leon hasn't broken tradition and still undercuts the Golf on price when you compare like-for-like -like versions. It's also cheaper than a Ford Focus, although all those cars are a lot more expensive than a Skoda Scala. When you're buying on a PCP finance deal, then the differences aren't quite so clear-cut. But no matter how you want to buy your car, for the latest prices and the biggest savings, go to whatcar.com. Same underpinnings, same engines, same gearboxes, but are they identical to drive? Definitely not. The Leon is brilliant to drive. We've got an FR model here, so that gets sport suspension as standard. And really on these twisty roads, it's absolutely brilliant. It really shines. It turns in keenly into bends. There's hardly any body lean. There's loads of grip. It's excellent. Okay, a Ford Focus ST line, just is a little bit more playful, but the Leon actually has better steering. It's more naturally weighted. Although, the downside to that slightly sporty feel is a bit of a firm ride. Which is where the Golf wins some points back, because it's more comfortable, but not by as much as you might imagine. Because previous Golfs always had class-leading rides, or rides that were right up there with the very best family cars on sale. Now, I feel like I'm making a lot of comparisons with the old Golf, but it's still important to point out, this car just isn't as good in that respect again. You're jostled around more. And admittedly, this isn't quite a like-for-like -like comparison because we've got a Leon on sports suspension and this Golf that's not on sports suspension, but still, we've driven lots of different versions of both cars. And no matter how you want to weigh it up, the Golf overall is more comfortable than the Leon. But there's not a lot in it, and it's mainly because at those lower speeds, the Leon, especially on that sport suspension, is just a bit firmer. You can also go for an optional extra in the Golf called Dynamic Chassis Control, and that is adaptive suspension, which makes this one of the smoothest cars in the class, but it's really expensive, so we wouldn't say it's a necessity. Elsewhere, the Golf on the road, it's good, it's a good car. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, even if it doesn't quite match the extremely high standards of past golfs. So the steering's good, but it does lean in bends more than the Leon. And it just means that ultimately that makes it not quite so fun to drive. And it doesn't feel quite so agile and playful really. Exactly the same 128 brake horsepower, 1.5 litre petrol engine is fitted to both cars, offering, as you'd expect, similarly flexible, decent performance. For the Leon, it's the pick of the range. But for the Golf, for around 600 pounds, you can upgrade to a 148 brake horsepower version of that same 1.5 litre engine. And if you do that, you also get a more sophisticated suspension setup to go with it. So actually, for this car, we'd recommend going for that. In the Leon, the same engine upgrade costs about 1300 pounds and you don't get any suspension changes either. So that's why, we actually recommend different engines for these two cars, even though they are very similar in many other ways. But the engine lineups in both cars should have something for everyone, no matter what your needs are. So they've got smaller one liter engines if you're mainly in town, they've got diesels if you're doing big miles. There should be some performance focus variants coming on the way as well. You'll also have some plug-in hybrids. And right now there's a mild hybrid, which you might be drawn into because of the hybrid name in it, but it's essentially that 1.5 litre, 148 brake horsepower engine with an automatic gearbox and a 48 volt mild hybrid system. But really, the gains in fuel economy aren't that significant and it's quite expensive, so it's not wholly recommendable. So both these cars tick a lot of boxes on the road, but it's the Leon that feels more special. The Leon has been very close to the Golf over the years, but now it's more fun to drive, has a better infotainment system and more space in the back. So in many ways, it's a fundamentally better car than the new Golf. The Golf is still a very good car and in the family car class, it is really recommendable, but it's not the outstanding all-rounder that it once was. For now, there's a new family car king. But which one would you have? Let us know in the comments below, make sure you're subscribed and if you want a great deal on your next car, go to whatcar.com.
In fact, if you want this Leon, then our favourite version of the car is available with more than £2,200 off its list price.